Hello everybody, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. And here we are in Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. You know, one of the most dramatic effects you can create in any video editor is something called a time lapse. In a time lapse, we're taking a series of usually still photos, and these photos were taken, say, a minute or so apart. We're combining them using each photo as an individual frame in a video, and the effect is quite dramatic of time passing very, very quickly. Great for capturing images of nature. We have, in fact, a series of photos here provided by my good friend, Sid Finch, who is a big supporter at moviepicks.com. He provided me with nearly 500 photos here taken in sequence of a sunrise in Northern California. You notice that each of these photos, by the way, is alphanumerically named. So in case anything happened, they're knocked out of order. We can always reset them to kind of reorder themselves in alphanumeric and they'll be in the correct chronological order. Okay, so back in Movie Studio Platinum, we'll go to Add Media, and we'll select all these photos. I'm just going to Control A to select them all, and click Open, and they'll be added to our project. Now, by default, when you add a photo to a timeline in virtually every video editor, including Vegas Movie Studio Platinum, the photo comes in at five seconds in length. So that's what appears on your timeline. That won't make for a good time lapse, of course. This time lapse would go on for several minutes. <laughs> and we wanted to pass in a couple of seconds. So I'm going to remove that event from the timeline. And we're going to change our preferences. I'm also going to make sure I'm at the very beginning of my timeline by holding down the Control key and pressing Home. And then we'll go up to Options at the top of the program and select Preferences and go to the Editing tab. You notice by default, a still image on the timeline is five seconds long or 150 frames long in a 30 frames per second project. We're going to change that number to 0.03. That is three one hundredths of a second. In other words, that will give us 30 different images every second or each image taking up one frame of our video. And that's good. That will give us a nice time lapse. Click OK. We'll select all of these photos, Control A, and drag them down to our timeline. And then I'm going to use the roller on my mouse to roll in so we can actually see that each of these still photos has come in as, a, as if it were a frame of video. Okay, so we have 30 still frames every second. And I can play that and that will actually look pretty good. If you look at the preview window, there's a nice time lapse. However, you notice that because photos are four by three and a video frame typically is 16 by nine, the photos don't fill the video frame. Now, if that bothers you, if you don't like having it letterbox like that, I can show you a trick around that. Go to the track header and click on the hamburger menu here and select track motion. That opens up a window in which we can kind of enlarge or shrink the entire video track or the uh, media on the video track so that it more tightly fits inside the video frame. And I found that if I just go up here to position and change 1920 by 1080 to 2500, now you notice that also enlarges the height. So we're keeping it in its proper aspect ratio that now my photo is filling the video frame may need some adjustments there, 2500, maybe more like 2550, because I'm still getting a little bit of a black rim here. Let's go ahead and change that 2550. Very nice. And now it fills the frame nicely. Uh, we have lost some of the top and bottom of our photo because our photo is a little taller than a typical video frame. It's, you know, again, four by three rather than 16 by nine. And we can just move this little frame box in the center to make sure that the key parts of the image are what we see. Now I have a problem, which was that I didn't have my playhead at the very beginning of the timeline when I made these settings. See it right there? And that created a keyframe, which means that I am not going to get this consistently or this setting consistently throughout the whole movie. That was my mistake. But in case you make that mistake, all you need to do is just grab that little diamond shaped keyframe, drag it to the very beginning of the timeline. We should be all set now. So let's close the track motion box and let's see how our time lapse looks. Beautiful, beautiful work. And isn't that a dramatic presentation? Time lapse can be tremendously dramatic and it's very easy to do as long as you remember to change the preferences. 
If you want to know more about this program, some of the hidden tools in it, or some of the nuances, be sure to check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. You want to know everything about this program, every single tool in it, then check out the moviepix.com guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. It's available at amazon.com, and I'm the author. I'm Steve Grizzetti. I hope to see you again real soon.